the brutal execution of Pedro Medina, will forever linger in the minds of the people that witness his execution. Pedro Luis Medina was born on October 5, 1957. He was a Cuban refugee. Medina came to the United States from Cuba in 1980 as part of the Mariel boat lift when he was 19 years old. He was released from a Cuban mental hospital immediately before leaving Cuba. Medina lived in the Orlando area and was befriended by Dorothy James. In late 1981, Medina moved to Tampa. Dorothy James was found dead in her apartment on April 4, 1982. She had been gagged, stabbed multiple times, and left to die. Early in the morning of April 8, 1982, Medina was found asleep in James' automobile at a rest area on Interstate 10 near Lake City and was arrested for theft of the automobile. The next day, Detectives from Orange County, Florida investigating the murder of James interviewed Medina in the Columbia County Jail about the auto theft and the murder. Medina's explanation of how he came to be in James' vehicle was not believed by the detectives. Medina was arrested and indicted for the murder of James. Medina requested a psychiatric examination and was examined by two psychiatrists. Each determined that Medina met the statutory criteria for competence to stand trial. The trial court found Medina competent to stand trial. Medina was tried before a jury in Orange County on March 15 to 18, 1983. Medina testified in his own defense and denied murdering James. However, Medina admitted being in James' apartment the night of the murder and that he was in James' apartment when James was dead. Medina also admitted that a hat found by police detectives on a bed near James' body was his hat and that he took James' automobile after she was murdered. Medina admitted driving James' automobile to Tampa and offering to sell the automobile to a man with whom he engaged in a fight at the time of the attempted sale. The man to whom Medina was selling the automobile testified that he gave Medina $250 for the automobile, but then Medina left with the automobile. When law enforcement officers searched the vehicle following Medina's arrest, a knife was found in the vehicle. Medina was convicted of first-degree murder and auto theft. The jury, by a 10-2 vote, recommended the death penalty for the murder conviction. The trial court found two aggravating circumstances and a single mitigating circumstance. The court found the aggravating circumstances outweighed the mitigating circumstance and sentenced Medina to death. This court affirmed Medina's convictions and sentences. Florida's electric chair malfunctioned again during the execution of Pedro Medina on March 25, 1997 resulting in another violent scene with smoke and flames spurting from the headpiece. Unlike Tafaro, Medina's eyebrows, eyelashes, and facial hair were not burned off. However, Medina's head was charred and his face was scalded. When the electrical current was activated, within seconds, smoke emanated from under the right side of Medina's headpiece followed by a 4 to 5 inch yellow orange flame which lasted 4 to 5 seconds and then disappeared. After the flame went out, more smoke emanated from under the headpiece to the extent that the death chamber was filled with smoke, but the smoke was not dense enough to impair visibility in or through the chamber. The smoke continued until the electrical current was shut off in the middle of the third cycle. Although several witnesses to the execution tried to describe the odor of the smoke, 
Only one witness, Florida State Prison Superintendent Ronald McAndrews, described the odor as burnt sponge. This court finds that the odor smelled was burnt sponge, not burnt flesh. The physician's assistant, William Matthews, examined Medina's body. At that time, Medina was not breathing or exchanging air through his nostrils. His pupils were fixed and dilated, and he had an agonal pulse and heart sounds. When the physician's assistant was no longer able to detect any pulse or heart sounds, the attending physician, Dr. Almagera, examined Medina and pronounced him dead at 7. 10 a.m. During Dr. Almagera's last examination Medina's chest was seen to move two or three times in a two to four minute period. A couple of witnesses thought Medina was trying to breathe. Several witnesses did not describe it as attempted breathing, but as a lurching, spasmodic movement, a shudder, and outward not upward movement. No witness particularly those closest to Medina, could state that he was in fact breathing or attempting to breathe. Gruesome executions are not new in Florida or elsewhere. In 1990, when Florida killed Jesse Tafaro, six-inch flames erupted from his head when the electricity was turned on. It took a total of three jolts of electricity to stop Tafaro's breathing. Lethal injection, which is viewed as a more humane way to kill, in 1992, it took Arkansas prison officials almost an hour to find a suitable vein on Ricky Ray Vector, a mentally retarded inmate, to administer the lethal injection. Though they weren't allowed to view the scene, witnesses could hear Vector's moans and screams throughout the ordeal. Pope John Paul II spoke out and organized against the killing of Medina, a mentally ill Cuban refugee. Lindy James, the daughter of the woman Medina was convicted of killing, was also active on his behalf. James said she believed Medina was innocent of the killing and that her mother would have opposed the execution in any case. Medina's last words before being strapped into the electric chair were I'm still innocent. An autopsy found that Medina's death was instantaneous due to massive depolarization of the brain and brain stem when the first jolt of electricity surged through Medina's body. A doctor described it as like turning the lights off. A neurologist testified that the apparent breathing movements were likely caused by the last vestiges of survival in the brain stem after the brain itself had died. A circuit court judge ruled that the flaws in the execution had been from an intentional human error rather than any faults in the electric chair's apparatus, equipment, and electrical circuitry though he did recommend that the lead leg piece be replaced with a more conductive brass electrode. Thank you for watching Death Row.